The Classic Cone Tornado The cone tornado is what comes to mind when you picture a funnel cloud tearing through a field. It's wide at the top, narrow at the bottom, perfectly balanced and almost geometric in shape. This type of tornado forms when the rotation inside a thunderstorm's updraft strengthens and tightens near the cloud base. As the air gets pulled downward, condensation marks the visible funnel. Cone tornadoes are often what photographers capture. Their symmetry makes them striking, even cinematic, but they're deceptive. Some start small and grow into monstrous wedge tornadoes in minutes. One striking example occurred in Dodge City, Kansas in 2016 when a graceful cone tornado suddenly intensified, birthing several smaller vortices around it. It was mesmerizing and terrifying at the same time, a reminder that beauty in nature often hides danger. The Rope Tornado The rope tornado looks delicate, like a thin thread connecting heaven and earth. But looks can be deceiving. Rope tornadoes usually appear near the end of a tornado's life cycle. As the storm weakens, the main funnel narrows and stretches, twisting into long curving shapes that look almost alive. They can bend, loop, or even double back on themselves as changing winds tug them apart. Despite their fragile appearance, rope tornadoes can still pack winds over 150 miles per hour. In 2013, storm chasers in Bennington, Kansas witnessed a rope tornado dancing across open fields, swirling, bending, then vanishing in seconds. It's like nature signing its final flourish before the storm dies a fleeting, ghostly reminder of the chaos it leaves behind. The Wedge Tornado Then there's the Wedge Tornado, the true monster of the storm world. Wedge tornadoes are so large that you might not even recognize them as tornadoes at all. They can span more than a mile in width and look more like a black wall rolling across the landscape than a funnel. This shape forms when the tornado's circulation is extremely broad and the updraft powerful enough to pull in massive amounts of debris and moisture. The wider the base, the more air is rotating, and the stronger the tornado tends to be. The 2011 Joplin, Missouri EF5 is a perfect example. Its wedge shape was so enormous that survivors said they couldn't even see the edges. The sky just turned black and the wind became a freight train. When you see a wedge tornado, there's no mistaking what's happening. You're looking at one of the most destructive forces on Earth, the stovepipe tornado. Now, meet the stovepipe tornado, a perfect cylinder of destruction. Imagine a smooth, straight column of rotating air that connects cloud to ground with surgical precision. This shape usually appears during a tornado's mature stage, when it's stable and intensely organized. The airflow is balanced, the pressure difference is extreme, and the tornado is at its most efficient in terms of energy transfer. A stovepipe tornado is a storm chaser's dream, photogenic, dramatic, and eerily consistent. But it's also deadly. The 2010 Battle South Dakota tornado was a textbook stovepipe, towering and terrifying. Its shape told meteorologists that the storm was sustaining itself efficiently, meaning it could remain on the ground for miles. That's the terrifying thing about stovepipes. Their beauty hides the fact that they're often killers. The multi-vortex tornado. This is where things start to get wild. A multi-vortex tornado isn't a single funnel. It's a cluster of smaller funnels spinning around one core. Each smaller vortex can have wind speeds that exceed 200 or even 250 miles per hour. To the naked eye, it can look like a tornado made of spinning tentacles. A sight so surreal, it seems like something out of a nightmare. The 2013 El Reno, Oklahoma tornado, the widest ever recorded at 2.6 miles across, had multiple vortices swirling inside it. They spun around like gears in a giant atmospheric machine, constantly forming and collapsing. This complexity makes these tornadoes especially dangerous. Their damage paths can be erratic, skipping over one house and obliterating the next. The Satellite Tornado Few tornado formations are as eerie as the Satellite Tornado. It's when a smaller tornado forms near the main funnel and begins to orbit around it, like a moon around a planet. This phenomenon happens when the storm's rotational energy splits, producing two distinct centers of spin. The smaller tornado isn't a fragment. It's a separate funnel being pulled into the larger system's gravitational-like influence. 
Satellite tornadoes can merge, separate, or vanish within seconds, but they make for jaw-dropping footage. In 2018, near Tescott, Kansas, storm chasers captured a main tornado surrounded by a smaller satellite twister, both rotating in sync like a dark duet. The Tornado Family Sometimes, a single storm spawns a family of tornadoes, multiple funnels forming in succession from the same parent supercell. Each new tornado begins as the old one fades, following roughly the same path. To observers, it can seem like one long-lived twister regenerating endlessly. The 1974 super outbreak across the U.S. produced entire families of tornadoes, some lasting for hours and devastating multiple towns. Meteorologists use these events to study storm cycling, how one mesocyclone gives birth to another. It's both fascinating and horrifying, like watching a storm that refuses to die, reinventing itself again and again. The Twin Tornado A twin tornado is when two full-size tornadoes form side by side, often from the same storm. They can rotate around each other in a dance of destruction, sometimes merging, sometimes tearing in opposite directions. One of the most jaw-dropping examples occurred in Pilger, Nebraska in 2014 when two EF4 tornadoes touched down almost simultaneously. The footage is surreal, two massive funnels tearing through the same town at once, leaving meteorologists stunned. Twin tornadoes are extremely rare because the atmospheric balance needed to sustain both at once is delicate. But when it happens, it's one of the most unforgettable sights in meteorology. The Water Spout When a tornado touches down over water, we call it a water spout, and it's every bit as mesmerizing as it sounds. Water spouts can look like thin white ropes or thick twisting columns that stretch from ocean to cloud. They're common in tropical regions, especially around the Florida Keys and the Mediterranean Sea. Unlike most land tornadoes, fair-weather water spouts don't need supercells to form. They can develop from ordinary cumulus clouds when warm water meets cooler air above. But don't underestimate them. Some can reach wind speeds of over 100 miles per hour, tossing boats and snapping masts. When seen at sunset, they're hauntingly beautiful, like ghostly pillars rising from the sea. The Invisible Tornado Perhaps the most unsettling of all is the Invisible Tornado. It sounds like something out of science fiction, but it's very real. A tornado becomes invisible when there's not enough moisture or debris to make the funnel visible. That means you could be standing near one and not even realize it until debris starts flying or your ears pop from the pressure drop. Meteorologists detect these using Doppler radar, which can spot rotation even when the funnel is invisible to the eye. But on the ground, it's a silent predator. You might only notice the sound of roaring wind or see trees bending in one direction. It's a reminder that the most dangerous forces aren't always the ones we can see. The truncated tornado. Another bizarre shape is the truncated tornado. A funnel that appears to hang halfway between the cloud and the ground without fully touching down. Sometimes it's just an illusion caused by visibility. Other times the tornado's rotation doesn't extend far enough to meet the surface. But in some cases, these half-formed tornadoes can still produce damaging winds on the ground, even without a visible connection. They're strange because they challenge what we expect from tornadoes. They look incomplete, yet they're still alive and dangerous. 